Chairman Sharp is to keep focused on the real vision and the real promise. And Nehemiah didn't come to build good relationships with Sanballat. Huh? He came to build the wall of Jerusalem. And that's what he kept his focus on. Even though people say, well, yeah, but what about all these other people? You've got to stay focused. You know, I was talking to Neo the other day about back in the beginning when we started the El Shaddai family. And it was just me and mom in Bangkok praying. And we prayed in Bangkok for six months before we had any kids. There was a lot of pressure in those days to take children that were crippled, blind, deaf, mentally retarded, whatever. And we had to say no. Well, what kind of love is that? Sometimes you're faced with some very difficult, hard to discern choices and decisions. Well, because our vision is to raise up a very mobile, very effective family of leaders for a nation that can begin to raise other leaders and plant churches across Asia. God bless the little blind kids. Amen? You can't come to me and say, you got to look after every kid in the world because you're Al. Margaret, you should be teaching every kid in the world Sunday school because you're Margaret. You just turn around and say, well, why don't you look after the blind kids? If that's the vision and that's the purpose that God's put on your heart, because they need to be looked after too. And they have a great potential and God could do something wonderful there too. But he's given us this vision. Nehemiah says, our vision is to build the wall of Jerusalem. Get the gates up so that people around the world can see this is the city of God. And so you do have to make some very difficult decisions that people won't understand. And talk about the drama of that. Just go on the internet and get onto some of those forums. People criticizing other people like just critical. People criticizing Christians because of something that happened in Iraq. I didn't do it. <laughs> Honest. I was here the whole time. <laughs> the world wants to suck us into this drama. Suck us into this battle that's not our battle. Amen. Pick sides in a battle that isn't ours. Get all distraught and upset. The political drama in Thailand right now. It's just so dramatized. Forget it, guys. Because what happens, right now, it'll pull you away from the focus of what God's called us to do. As interesting as that is, and as how, how we would love to join the fight. I'd love to go to Bangkok and be involved in some riots, you know? Get some good pictures and stuff. <laughs> no, we've got to stay focused. The world is the world. There's always going to be Sanballat and Tobiah and Gershon and those guys. They're always going to be criticized and always going to be asking you the questions that, you know what? They don't deserve an answer. Okay, the third type of drama that they try to pull Nehemiah into is the drama of self-preservation. And this one gets even more difficult to discern, right? In verse 10, it says, Afterward, I came to the house of Shemaiah, who was a secret informer, and he said, Let us meet together in the house of God within the temple and let us close the doors of the temple, for they are coming to kill you. And I said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there, such as I, who would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. Then I perceived that God had not sent him at all. Interesting. He made up his mind and then he perceived. Right? He followed the vision first. And then the perception came. The understanding came. I perceived that God had not sent him at all. But that he pronounced this prophecy against me because Tobiah and Sanballat had hired him. For this reason he was hired, that I should be afraid and act that way and sin, so that they might have cause for an evil report and they might reproach me. My God, remember Tobiah and Sanballat according to these their works, and the prophetess Noadiah and the rest of the prophets who would have made me afraid. Now it's interesting that this secret informer was a double agent, right? Working for both sides. <laughs> oh, the drama of it all. Make a good movie, wouldn't it? I love this Julia Cameron. She's a writer and she's spent all of her life writing movie scripts and uh, novels and fiction and all that kind of stuff. She says, 
that you've got to keep the drama on the page. That when her friend phones her up and says, you know, so and so saying, no, 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 no. She says, well, you know what? It's going to all work out. Just remember that you love your friend. And, well, yeah, but you know, she says, you know what? I've, I've got some work to do right now. Yeah, but you know, she says, you know what? I'm going to take your story and I'm going to write it. You're going to become a character in my next book. How would you like that? <laughs> and that's what she kept doing. Instead of stewing and feeling broken and hurt and treated unfairly, huh? isn't that what drama does? Oh, poor me, says Saul. Harley, why don't you feel sorry for me? They all love David more than they love me. I mean, don't you feel sorry for him, man? No, actually, I love David too. <laughs> hey, the drama doesn't help, doesn't fix it at all. We see this last kind of drama is this self-preservation where they tempt Nehemiah to go into the temple to save his life. From what? Do you realize that Sanballat hasn't even showed up yet? All he's done is sent messengers. The guy hasn't even had the guts to show up himself at this point. Yeah, I'm scared to death. <laughs> right? But it can be scary if you're not focused on the vision and on the purpose and on what God told you to do. You can begin to get thinking about and fearing that whole idea of, well, maybe he is going to kill me. Maybe I should run to the temple. No, don't do it. Don't run to the temple. Stay focused. This is the last test. <laughs> After this, we're going to hang the doors. Right? And they did that, and it says right in the next verse 15, so the wall was finished on the 25th day of so-and-so, and it happened when all our enemies saw it, that the nations around saw these things, that they were very disheartened in their own eyes, and they perceived that this is the work of God, and so on. Well, I hope you've cut the drama because we don't want to enter into the drama of losers, right? I mean, you don't want to be mean, but the fact is that some of us win and many people in the world lose. God needs winners. He needs people who can walk in the success of the leadership that he's given us so that we can take this kind of encouragement to the world to help other people up, to pull them up from where they are, to help them accomplish what God wants them to do. And you know, our mission statement at Continuum Media is mobilizing believers into their great commission destiny. And these CLR tools are one of the most amazing ways to mobilize you into your great commission leadership destiny. And we've made it just as easy as absolutely possible. There's probably about 10 different ways that you can access these resources. And uh, we do want to make it easy and simple because I know if you're like me, you don't have a lot of time to waste surfing the web and arranging things and mailing things and all that kind of stuff. So basically, if you go to YouTube and you search ConMedL, or you can even do it in Google and it'll take you straight to YouTube. You can also get them on iTunes and download them as podcasts. If you don't have an iPod, you need to get one. That's not a plug for Apple, but that's a plug for your potential because God wants you to have those resources with you. I love taking my iPod on the airplane, nice video iPod, and I can watch you know, video podcasts from all over the world and really feed myself and encourage myself. So you need to have an iPod. You need to get these as, uh, from iTunes as podcasts, and you also need to be able to connect, you know, book, bookmark some of the YouTube and some of those other places. Connect with us on Facebook, Al Purvis. Just go there, become a friend. You can get all this stuff as well. And, uh, you know, we want to make sure that you have it available. Now, listen, I'll tell you what I'll do. If you will email us and let us know your email address, you say, I want to receive the CLR um, leadership episodes monthly. We'll email you every time we put another one out. There'll be a link right in that email and you can go straight to it. Can't get much easier than that. And these 10 minute leadership episodes will encourage you and mobilize you into the destiny that God has given you. I bless you and pray that God will increase you through good leadership.